Ben Jackson, he will tell us why we should open source our work. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, can everyone hear me? Yeah, yeah sweet. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, uh, Amazy and why we opened up the Lagoon platform um, and a little bit of the challenges we face and stuff along the way. Um, go slides. Uh, so a little bit about me. Um, I've been a systems engineer for about six or so years. A um, little bit of like programming and Arduino Raspberry Pi, like tinkering and just hacking in general and laser cutting and 3D printing stuff. So if you went to our little booth, the little display that's holding the leaflets, I actually cut on my laser cutter. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the benefits of open sourcing your work, um, the challenges, and then a little bit of a recap of our experience uh, after open sourcing the platform. Um, so we'll start off with a, like a show of hands on who uses open source software. So we'll start with, uh, with Drupal, uh, Composer, MariaDB, Redis, then Nginx or Apache, uh, PHP, and then the Linux in general. Cool. So <laughs> we'll agree that open source is everywhere today. Uh, it could be in your TV at home, or if you've got a toaster that's connected to the internet, it could even be on that. It could be pretty much anywhere. Um, what about who's a contributor to an open source project? Awesome. And that, uh, it's, it's really good to see people contributing back to open source. Um, I know most of the time people don't get any um, praise or any money from doing any of that work. So it's, it's really good to see um, that you can create value just from contributing back to any open source project, whatever that contribution is, like documentation, whatever. Um, so talk a little bit about Amazio. So um, we built Lagoon, which is the hosting platform mainly for Drupal, but you can also run like WordPress or Node, pretty much anything that you can containerize, you can run on the platform. Um, we're part of the Amazio group, which is a larger net of companies. Uh, so there's marketing and metrics and that sort of thing. Um, the core team for Amazio has done hosting services for more than eight years, like combined or even longer probably from all of the skill in the team. Um, we really know how to do high traffic sites and high performance sites and what preparation needs to go into to maintaining them. Um, we're a completely remote team as well. So I'm in Canberra, but we've got Scott in uh, Perth and Blaze and Tom are both in New Zealand and Sean as well. Um, and then we've got people in the US and in, in Europe that look after the different time zones. So we've got follow the world sort of um, support. Um, and we can do either hosting on cl in cloud, so in AWS or Azure or something, or also on premises if you've got your own. Um, Lagoon itself uh, does a lot of things when you want to deploy. So you can deploy from a local environment, build everything locally, and it'll containerize it. And then when it goes into, um, into Lagoon itself, it does the same process. It'll build and create the containers the exact same way. So what you deploy locally should deploy the exact same way in, in the cloud. Um, so one of the, the, Michael, our CTO, said from the beginning in one of the blog posts that they looked at the whole ecosystem of how Drupal um, sites are hosted, and it troubled us to see that most of the time when you're building open source software, you can see everything, but the hosting layer is usually proprietary, and you don't have visibility of it. Um, so you can't see, see what's happening within that layer. So if there's some security vulnerability or something, you may not know about it because you can't really see that. You can't probe it, so you don't know what's actually happening under the hood. Um, so yeah, having an open platform means that you, you, can, you can see that sort of thing. Um, so we'll have a look at a conventional hosting stack. Um, you've got the content management system, or in this case, it'll be Drupal. Um, then we've got the hosting platform where we don't really know what the secret source is. Uh, then you've got PHP, which is open source. Nginx, Apache, MariaDB, and the rest of it is all, is all open source. So you can see it, you can modify it, you can do whatever you want. But when you get to the hosting platform, it's sort of like, eh, what's going on there? But then with Lagoon, we open source the hosting platform. So everything is fully open source. If you want to have a look at how we deploy the images, you can do it. If you want to look at the varnish configuration, for example, you can do that and see all the, the work that's been put into previous deployments and the configuration that's there. Um, and um, 
everything is is all there, and there's nothing nothing to hide. Um, so if there was an issue with somewhere along the way, and you wanted to figure out what was wrong, you you can have a look. Um, so if if you wanted to run it yourself, you could just download it, deploy it into OpenShift, and commit back and help help push it forward. Uh, there's always plenty to, to look at. So it's yeah, it's completely open source. So all the Docker images and how they're built. So all the all the components that you would use to build your containers locally for your hosting, um, they're all open source. They're all built and, and maintained by us as well. Um, all the configurations for the images are all available to download and, and modify, and you can add to them as well. So you don't need to necessarily build ours. You can build your own. Uh, the, again, the varnish configuration is, is fully available. So all the work that we put into it for building high performance and high traffic sites the varnish configuration that's been put in from years of experience is available for you to, to use and run yourself and even modify and submit back if you've found something that could be better. Um, and all the build and deploy scripts that are used to build and deploy the environments are available. The testing infrastructure, so how we do all the tests in Lagoon and everything is all open source and the complete documentation is all available for everyone to, to look at and, and have, have, have a play with. So. Um, one, one mantra that we, we always try to go by as well is that if there's an open source tool or product that can do something that we want to do, we'll use that rather than trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, in one, one example is that we use Keycloak for the authentication on our platform. Um, and Keycloak is an open source project that allows you to do single sign-on uh, well, in our case, it allows us to do single sign-on across the platform. So you can log into the, to the dashboard and view your projects, and then via that same authentication infrastructure, you can go to the logging, and you have access to all the logging for your projects. Because um, we didn't want the burden of having to <laughs> reinvent a whole single sign-on solution when somebody's already done that, just so that we could make the pro product even better. Um, but we've also had discussions like, your code's open now. Isn't that insecure? And the answer is sort of like no, um, because we sort of apply the principle of many eyes, where um, you've got a whole bunch of people looking at your code, and, and those people can see um, if there's a vulnerability or if, if you're doing something a, bit, a little bit silly, uh, similar to how Drupal do security. Um, the more people that look at it, um, they have, or have an incentive to look at your code and think about security components, the more secure that code can, can get, um, which is exactly how Drupal do security. Um, the other one's always around by um, big enterprise customers where <laughs> they, they might sign a contract with a vendor and that the vendor will say, our software's secure and bug-free. And it's like, well, they can say it's bug-free and secure, but it's software and it can still crash and nobody can see and tell that it's actually secure unless they get in to that closed source. Um, but with open source, you've, you've got that many eyes and people that want to use it and are using it, they can, they can go and have a look at it and find, find vulnerability, vulnerabilities and, and let you know. Um, and also with open source software, um, there's some places out there like the, I think the Europeans have the FOSS, which is a bug bounty program where you can actually earn money for um, discovering bugs and exploits, uh, and then submitting them and, and helping progress things better. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about some of the good things uh, about being open source. Um, one of the best is that everything happens in the open. Everyone can see what you're doing and what you're working on. Um, and a lot of the features that can come through that are dictated by where the project's heading and what custom features are needed. Um, so if a customer needs something in specific, like uh, the backup system that's in Lagoon um, was needed by one of our bigger customers. So we started implementing that, that backup solution. And now it was so successful that we've rolled it out to the rest of the clusters. So all of the customers benefit from that backup solution now. Um, other ones are if you've got an issue where you've rolled out some code and now suddenly everyone's happening, uh, something's happening in the cluster or in, in a, one of the platforms two or three times a day. Then you go, oh, maybe we've broken something there. Um, you can have people submitting issues 
and saying, I think you've broken something here. You could have them help discover stuff. Um, then you've also got maybe some documentation's a little bit out of date. Um, they can you know, help and people were more willing to contribute in that sort of way. Um, we also get uh, some customers helping other customers in GitHub. So someone might raise an issue and say, hey, we've got a problem doing X and we need it to do Y. And some other customer goes, hey, have you tried doing this instead to get you to Y? And then they're like, yeah. And it's like, great, they've helped themselves and we didn't need to do anything. So yeah, there's a lot of benefits from working in the open. We've also got a public roadmap where um, in, in GitHub where you can see what we've got earmarked for next releases and, and that sort of thing. And we've also um, publishing blog posts where with, with information on where the project's heading and, um, and what, what's, what's, what's coming. Um, we've also had people saying, you know, it's really cool that you've got Lagoon, but it would be really nice to run it on like vanilla Kubernetes because currently we only really support OpenShift. Um, so we're currently working on actually being able to deploy or run Lagoon on vanilla Kubernetes. So um, it's cool that just like any customer or anybody in general can just say, hey, we want to do something with your project, but we need to be able to do X to do Y. And, they can, and then we can, get, we can talk to them and, and collaborate and see how we can make that happen if it's possible. Um, and it also leads to more interaction. So there's a lot of tickets always coming through and a lot of chat that's always happening. Um, so we can really communicate with a lot of customers on, on how we solve problems and, 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 and help them out. And sometimes it feels like, even though we're remote, it feels like we're in the office with those people, helping them with their problems directly. Um, I think there's a couple of people in here that I've probably spoken to quite regularly. And uh, it, yeah, it definitely feels like we've been in the same room just, just talking. There's also um, some challenges uh, having it open source. Um, one of the biggest ones was when we actually open sourced Lagoon was that um, it wasn't called Lagoon. It had a well, it was called Lagoon, but it had Amazio all over it. And someone was like, "It's cool that you've open sourced your project, but there's a company name all over it. Shouldn't it be an open source project rather than your company's project?" So um, yeah, we did a find and replace on the entire repository, changing Amazio to Lagoon. Ran the test. The tests all passed and merged it, and then. That was it. So now it's an open source project called Lagoon. Um, you also have um, people saying that it's like they raise issues and it's like, hey, we should, you should do this instead of that. Um, it's like they try and dictate where the project should go. Um, and that can be a little bit difficult to, to work with sometimes. Um, so we'll usually try and work around that by saying, hey, that's a great idea. Maybe you should write it down, say how you want to achieve that, um, how you think it should be done how it should behave, and then we can try and work together to, to come up with a, a way to actually implement that and see if it's something that everybody would want or could benefit from. Um, and then sometimes it could be that it's not even that big of an issue and nothing comes of it. So, um, But then if you've got someone that's got real proof of like, you should be doing it this way because of X, then we'll definitely like explore that and collaborate with them. Um, some other things are that not everyone wants to have their name in the open. So um, some customers will say, we want to raise an issue, but we don't want to have our name in GitHub, or we don't want to have our company associated with the issue in GitHub, or whatever. Um, so we can do those issues for them. And just like if for security stuff as well, um, they can email us privately, and we can work to, to solve security issues. Or if it's just a general that they don't want their name in the open, then yeah. Um, and the other thing is you need to think about your code a lot more. Um, you can't just like implement a small hack and go, yeah, it's a hack. That's great. And then put a comment that says, hack to solve x. Submit it, because then you've got everyone looking at it. So you've got to be a little bit more uh, thinking about what you're actually putting out into the open to make sure that somebody else can understand that change uh, or if it will impact anybody else. Um, so yeah. A bit over two years ago, we open sourced Lagoon. Um, and what did we find? We've, we've found that people actually want to use it. Um, it's exceeding our expectations. We found customers kept saying everything is open source, everything in our stack can be looked at, everything can be audited, and that they can change it to suit their needs. Um, 
so, and they can help make it better. And that's really cool. And we're hoping to, to keep that going and have more people involved. Um, we've got weekly pull requests that are coming in and closing. Carl is referenced in every other talk that I've been to so far. So Carl's done some pull requests um, and they've been merged in, which has been really good. Um, so yeah, just having people being involved and in trying to push the product further is, is really good. Um, and no contribution is too small. So if you identify an issue or f want to flag an issue that you think needs some attention, don't be afraid to do it. No one's going to buy it or have a go at you or anything. Just it's good to start discussions and, and, and get things going. So if there's an issue and people need to know about it, don't be afraid to raise them. And if implementing new ideas or new features and stuff, start a discussion because there might be a bunch of other people that want the same thing. And if you don't say it, it's not going to happen. So yeah, definitely start talking about stuff. And if you find some documentation that's wrong, like submit a PR, a typo. Like I think there was a PR for a one letter change once and it was just like, yep, straight in. It's like stuff like that. It just helps everyone at the end of the day and everyone will benefit from contributions. And one thing to ask yourself as well is uh, if, if anyone else could benefit from any work that you've done if you just open sourced it. Um, if you wrote some code that helped you out of a sticky situation that someone else might find useful, which could save them hours or days of pain, maybe you should open source it. Like other people can benefit from it. Because maybe one day your code could be the shoulders that other people stand on. That's it. Thanks. We can do questions if there's any questions. I wasn't going to, but I guess we can try it. Are you going to make the slides available? I can, under shaved bacon. Yep. <laughs> well. Yeah, so Unix is open source. Yeah. The Mac itself isn't. Darwin is not, yeah, but the, the code that Darwin's built off is. So. <laughs> it's the same, like, well, it's the same with like OpenShift and Red Hat. You have enterprise and free versions, and they both have, you know, you've got the open source version of Red Hat and that's called CentOS, and it's basically same for same. And they use the same Linux kernel under the hood, so. Hey? I couldn't, no. <laughs> yeah, so, because I've got OpenStack at home. <laughs> Any other? No? Cool.